I believe we can prevent heart attack. With the right knowledge and information, we can be informed, forewarned and prepared. We can put in place strategies to reduce risk. We can literally plan to change your future. It all started when my life changed on a day a life was nearly lost. In 2005, on a cool autumn Sunday morning, I was driving to work during the time a fun run was in progress. I noticed there was a commotion by the side of the road, an ambulance and people gathering, and I thought I might just stop and see if I could help. It turned out that a 52-year-old man during the run had collapsed dead by the side of the road. A GP and a nurse who happened to be in the event had stopped to help and the ambulance was there attending the scene. I joined in and was involved in the resuscitation of that man. Can you imagine a crowd of healthy runners, a man who had got up that morning excited to be part of an event he'd trained for, and now that man by the side of the road. His heart had stopped and now he was fighting for his life. He did okay. Two days later, in fact, he made the front page of the local paper and I was so proud of myself that I took the paper into my office only to have it pointed out to me by one of my staff that I'd seen the very same man approximately 18 months earlier in 2003 and told him he was fine. I had put him through a treadmill test, I had assessed his blood pressure, I had put him on a bit of aspirin, but nonetheless, here we are in 2005 and this man had fallen during a fun run. Can you imagine how I felt? I'd reassured him only to be standing over his dead body at the roadside months later. I can't begin to tell you the feeling that left me with. What had I done wrong? What could I have done differently? What can be done differently? We all hear the statistics. We know that cardiovascular disease accounts for 50% of all deaths in the Western world. It kills over 350,000 people per annum in the United States. And that means that an American is dying every 40 seconds. In fact, since I've started talking, approximately three people have passed away from coronary disease. But it's not the statistics that move us. It's the human cost. You will know someone. Stories of young lives lost. Loved ones, husbands, wives, brothers and sisters. Could it be you? Who would be affected if it were you? What if it was someone you loved? It was this that was my impetus to change. More than ever, I became focused on prevention of the suffering caused by heart disease. I studied management of cholesterol and I also became the first cardiologist in the state where I live to start using the latest imaging technology to help define the health of the arteries of an individual. I wanted to make a difference by providing the best possible care to my patients. My aim to reduce their risk of heart attack as much as possible. In fact, I became so excited about this possibility, I started to speak with my colleagues about it. I spoke at meetings in my town to the specialists like me, thinking they would be excited to embrace this new approach as, as I was. They weren't. Uh, professional conservatism, healthy scepticism, and perhaps just a dash of cynicism meant I hit a brick wall. I spoke with the local doctors, the primary caregivers, to educate them about this great opportunity to be ahead of the game of heart disease. Another brick wall. Though this time because of a reluctance to utilise an approach that is not yet mainstream. Unable to convince my colleagues and unable to engage the local doctors, I was frustrated. I felt like I had a secret that could save the world, but nobody wanted to listen. I knew from my own experiences with my own patients that the way I was implementing treatments was making a difference. So how to get that information out there? Eventually I decided if I can't change the world from the top down, then I'd try to change things from the bottom up by educating and informing the very people who would be most interested in preventing a heart attack. And that's you. So I wrote a book. Well, initially it didn't sell particularly well. So I thought, well, what's the point of that? Unless I got the message out, then the message wouldn't be heard. And if it wasn't going to be heard, it wasn't going to make a difference and it wasn't going to save any lives. 
Then I realized I had to undertake my own journey to eventually bring my book to number one bestseller. I started to embrace social media and to create awareness. I needed to offer people a way to get more than and that led me to create a network, a distillation of my research and my training and my experience. I truly believe we now have technology to save lives, to find people who really are at high risk of a heart attack before they have an event and put in place strategies to change their futures. I remain deeply passionate about stopping people dying while they still have plenty of life to live. You have to remember, Life is not a dress rehearsal.